engineering. And I remember the 80s when you couldn't even get a car with a back window that rolled down. Remember? Oh, no. No, the back windows don't roll down. Really? We don't have that technology? We can walk on the moon, but we can't roll down. Power. It's really the golden age of supercars. It, it is. And, you know, and, and nobody wants to be the first, second place car, you know. So our engineers want to build the best car, and the Camaro engineers want to build the best one, and the Dodge guys want it to go in a straight line really fast. And, you know, they everybody's competing against each other. So you have that technology, yeah. you have the enthusiasts that want to work on it, the suspension, and then the steering changes and then the pilot sport cup twos make a huge difference so. i'm in ninth gear now <laughs> drops it down to third <laughs> welcome to the episode of jay Lowe's garage the car we're featuring today the 2021 ford mustang mach one i'm sorry if it looks a little bit dirty that we borrow this and i put 200 miles on it the other day and uh, there's not much tire left the thing that astounded me the most was the steering it's amazing to me how far american manufacturing has come in handling and braking and saying we've always made fast cars i mean that's been a given since the 60s but almost regardless of the make with this gm ford chrysler uh, american technology and handling and braking this is a true sports car i mean it is truly an amazing automobile uh, i've got a gt350 mine's a 2015 and this of course six years later and this has a lot of the quality not as much horsepower as that one this is 480 but it has a 10 speed automatic which boggles my mind because you know the more gears you put in a transmission the smaller they are and the literally the stronger they have to be and i was curious to try this because this transmission thinks for you if you're on a track a little adapt and you know if you normally normally you go when you downshift you know you're in fourth or fifth and you come to the corner and downshifts it sequentially this will go it'll learn your style and go what like fifth to third or fifth to second depending on how i mean i wanted to try this 10 speed because well it's a 10 speed i mean it's hilarious to me to put your foot in i mean it just keeps shifting <laughs> you go where am i 7 12 where, where am i at now i mean it, it it's pretty amazing uh i'm gonna bring in the gentleman who is a brand manager for uh a shelby and, and mustang jim owens jim come on in nice job on this hi jay and they encourage you to beat it up i said uh oh you know the tires are kind of bald and <laughs> he goes no no that's all right don't worry about it uh, but you know i just had a lot of fun with this I mean, like I said, American cars are always fast, but the Europeans always used to make fun of us because you come to a corner and the front end would plow under or whatever. <laughs> this is really a sports car that you can drive every day, isn't it? It is the, well, actually now the world's best-selling sports car. Oh, is that right? Think yeah. about that. And we have been for the last couple of years. But, Jay, you know, you remember the 60s fondly, right? Which right. says straight line, and you mentioned some of the manufacturers, but, like, remember the old AMC Javelin right, back right. in the day? You know, it would go very quick straight line, uh, laterally left and right, if you think of the way they used to run, like, at Laguna Seca. Right. They, could, they could do well race-prepared, but the evolution of this sports car, specifically on the Mustang, and everything we have learned from 2015 and that GT350 that right. you drive, is in this today. It is the pinnacle of that five liter performance right. of what our engineers have learned over the past six years. You know, your Tom Barnes, your Del Zios, all those folks who actually put that engineering in are Mustang enthusiasts just like you. Right. And they've been able to give that confidence in this vehicle. Now, this doesn't have the flat plane crank like mine. No, no it's a cross plane crank in the right. five liter. Right. Um, you know, that, that cross plane crank um, obviously does some different things. That flat plane that you have right. in the 350 for your revving and a unique sound. I right. mean, that is just a unique sound. This one was based off of the five liter and we right. wanted to develop that pinnacle of five liter performance and the Mach 1 is it. It's almost as if the, they sort of went to the parts bin and took best pieces from the 350 and the other and sort of put, put it together. Put them together. Yeah, because, uh, boy, it just drives so nicely. I mean, there are a lot of folks out there that need four seats no matter how cramped they are <laughs> you, yeah, yeah you have to have it you know and sometimes that's the case with me too when i got to take my brother-in-law somewhere your <laughs> nieces and that, that kind of stuff so oh okay and geez and I, I i must say i you know i'm a standard shift guy but i just wanted to try this 10 speed just to see the number 10 come up 
and I'm going 70 and I'm turning 2100 RPMs. RPMs. Yeah. I go, oh, that, that's amazing. It is unbelievable. And, and you know, um, the GT500 you've driven, right? right has right. that Tremec dual clutch, you know, electronically controlled, you know, kind of like the Gertrag in the Ford GT right. that you have. But this is a 10R torque converter transmission right. that was adapted. And this didn't take on. You know, we weren't going to do the performance and handling package on the automatic right. until we got feedback in July right. from customers that, you know, um, we're getting a little bit, let's say, more seasoned right. and maybe not the third pedal that you want, but you still want to be able to drive it out on track. Right. Um, so the development team literally from about July time frame until when we actually brought it out because the Pilot Sport Cup 2s we can't produce in the winter in March when it released. We developed actually the automatic with the handling package that you felt from July basically till March. Now, you know, we took this up to Willow Springs. You know, most transmissions, you, when you, you're on the straight and you slow down, it'll go five, four, three, two. Whereas this will, when it realizes that you manually yeah, put when it you, in third instead of fourth or second instead of fifth, it'll do it. It does it. So it's, a, it's through the electronics, Jay. Right. And, and it will bop through from fifth to fourth to third to get it into that position. Um, but what it does is it through, and the computers that are on this vehicle, from the Magneride suspension that's in there, from the fuel system that's in there, plus the anti-lock braking system and the roll control, all of that is tied into that transmission as well. So it gets that feedback from all of those sensors that allows it to figure out how you are driving and put you in the best position to get back into the accelerator around a road course. If it knows when I hit 100 miles an hour and get on the brakes, it knows the last three times I did that, it went fifth to third or fifth to second. Yeah. It'll do that. It'll, it'll learn. And what it does is it adapts as it's going through. And yeah. it doesn't have like a memory, if you will. Right. But what it does is like when we were doing the development, when you, when you buy this car, Jay, you get an opportunity to go to the Ford Performance Racing School and learn how to drive right, it. Right. When we were out there developing the course, the engineers there were telling us that, hey, we had to put a couple good, you know, first slow speed laps and then into it so that the transmission can learn how we were doing it at that inside Roval at Charlotte. Tell me about the brakes. Brakes are just an incredible, I mean, if you think about it, um, you know, what we learned in the GT500, zero to 100 to zero on the deck of an aircraft carrier. Right. So the folks that were developing that program worked on this braking system as well. Those six piston Brembo calipers in there, places you and I don't want to go at night, we want those six pistons on that car. The stopping distance is absolutely amazing and repeatable. Well, you know, I like that sort of boutique engineering where you make the best thing you make, and if somebody else makes a better brake, let's get their brake. Somebody makes a better tire, you put the Michelin's on. You know, I mean, that's, it just, it, it's what an enthusiast. In the old days, you would buy the Mustang, <laughs> and then you would go somewhere and buy a Brembo bit and have them put on. You know, now it all just comes from, it, from one. It works with the partners, Jay. Right. And from Ford Performance, where, you know, we work with not only the Recaro, the Brembo, but these Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s. You know, the 4Ss are on the base car. The handling right. package car gets the, the Cup 2s. Um, all of those partners work with our engineering development to develop it specifically for the vehicle. Right. So it's not just you grab the thing off the shelf that Brembo makes. The Brembo engineers and, and, you know, and the Recaro seat folks will literally work to develop that specifically for this vehicle to maximize that performance. And we're really happy with the partners. I, I like this seat. It's, it's like a halfway between, like when I got my uh, GT350, it had the butter clutching yeah. <laughs> Brembo. And I, you know, I said, I said give me my stock seats. I put my stock seats in because I'm in traffic and I use it a yeah. lot. And if I'm sitting like this all the time, yeah. You know, whereas this is really a nice compromise. It's got a, it's got enough support, but it's still a comfortable chair. It chair you know. and and you know obviously FMVSS compliant, so it can hold you in while you're doing the lateral turns, like you're up at the streets of Willow or Big Willow. It'll hold you in there. Plus, then when you're on the five coming south, you'll feel comfortable in it. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's it's interesting. It really is the best of the GT350 with whatever comfort items. It's not as hardcore as that. It's got enough so the family can think of it as a family car and you, you, you know, can you drive can it. Yeah, it's, it's you can drive it right from here right up to the streets of Willow 
Yeah. Literally do the adjustments for your tire pressure, adjust the camber plates if you want, because it comes with the camber plates on it that you can adjust for track use. Then flip it out yourself, re loosen them, re push them back yeah. in, and then drive back home again. Now, the Mach 1 name has been dormant for what, about 30 something years? <laughs> um, well, we did have one in the 0304. Right, okay. it was that it was the the last of the Gen 4 Mustangs. That's right, I guess right? that's true. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was those last two years. Um, and other than that, yeah, it was back to the 60s. If you think about, it. we did have the little Mustang 2 version. Uh, right. But if you think about it, what Mach 1 meant at the time was you know about breaking the speed of sound. Right. It was nice when you think of Big Willow, right? Or right, some right. up there. That's where the sound barrier was broken. That was about personalization and aero. Right. And if you look at the front splitter on this, Jay, that actually puts that downforce on there, hundreds of iterations to work on that aero to make it you know, the best downforce possible. I, with that front splitter, I pulled into a fast food place and I thought, well, I'm, I'll park a little bit behind the thing just in case. And I got up and I was, oh, I was a quarter of an inch from, from the curb. I mean, that really, it, 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 does, it does stick out a bit. It, it is proud but functional. Yeah, so when yeah. we ship it to the dealer, that actually comes in the car itself. Right, uh, right. Because on the shipping piece in there, but that is actually functional not only on the street, but for the arrow when you're on the track. And that pretty much snaps. I mean, and you're gonna you're gonna scrape it, and it's, but it's easy enough to replace. Yeah, it's it's it literally you and I could do it right from underneath here. That's what I love about the McLaren P1. It has the same thing. If you uh, crack the splitter, you can either get a new splitter. Or a Z06 Corvette. <laughs> they're, the same, they're, they're the same. The carbon fiber, right. they're about the same price. But you know, that's what I like about American manufacturing. This is the equal of the BMW M series, any of those cars. I mean, it really is. If people, yeah, Miss Lennon, like that girl. But you know something? It, don't knock it till you tried it, because it's really good. I mean, I, I was just stunned at how well it handled, how much fun it was at Willow, and how easy it was to maneuver and then just drive home again. Yeah, Carol was into the if you remember the democratization of performance right, right? right he just didn't want it to happen to be that high end and our engineering team whether it's on the shelby gt 500s or 350s or the ford performance team we want to take those learnings from the gt 350 and 500 and then bring them into the five liter version of it and so all those learnings basically democratizes performance so that as we learn and it gets less expensive to do we can put them in a car like this let's open up the hood it's in the same spot. There we go. And those are functional vents, aren't they? Yep. Change well, of pressure vents. Well, that's what I like. There's no more phony, yeah. you know, drawn-on vents or any of that kind of nonsense. You know, everything is there for a reason now. And this almost looks aftermarket. <laughs> you know? It's a big cold air kit. Yeah, no, that's great. That's fabulous. You know, I never realized how much under, under hood temperatures affect things. Because I did that 7 liter Ford a while back. Yep. And that has the big Roush 427 <laughs> in it, blah, blah, blah. And one day I'm on the freeway and just, I just, I go, what's, wow, no, what's this? I pull over and I open the hood and the wave of heat, I mean, it literally, whoa, like that. And then we, we used a 3D printer, made a cold air package and brought it in over to here. And it, it was like a, Night and day. Night and day. I mean, it was, but I mean, how hot it was under that hood. It was just, and then you realize the engine is in pulling and all that. It's like you breathe in hot air. You're, yeah. you're not going to run. You're less efficient. I, exactly, exactly. And so. so the sensors that are in there now sense what the ambient temperature is of the air inlet and adjust the calibration for it. You talk about the 427 Roush back on the Gen 5 Mustangs. Right. They used to put in the back, I don't know if you've ever saw like the, the 427Rs that they used to do. They had an ice pack back here. Oh, right, that right. you could literally pour ice into on the track oh, so cool. that the yeah. air was coming through. Again, just changing that air temperature to make the engine more right. efficient. Kids always laugh at me because I call this the Monte Carlo bar because, <laughs> because my 63 Falcon, that, that's, I think that was the first car I ever saw had that brace. Yep. And they would put it on to do the rallies. And it was the Monte Carlo rally at one, so that became the Monte, Monte Carlo, Carlo bar. bar. And people go, what are we talking about Monte Carlo? <laughs> and then I explain, and they go, when was that? They go, well, 1963. What? How long ago was that? Yeah, I just forget about it. So I just call it a brace. All right. Yeah, it's cool. a strut tower brace. And, and what it does is it improves the torsional rigidity under stress. Right, right. Well, cool. Let's shut this again. All Let's right. move around to the back of the vehicle. I like the new design too. 
You know, I love, I love this is a full window. The thing that drives me nuts about the newer Camaro was it was, yeah. you know, just a Wendy single padding, right. and that's all, you know. <laughs> Whereas this, you can put, you know, it's, a, it's just a little more greenhouse. I like a lot of greenhouse. And a little bit better vision. You right. know, when you're on the track, that's what you're looking for. And on the streets here, obviously, with the freeways being so crowded, that does give you more of a vision. And then it does change the greenhouse so that you can get that sloping all the way right. back from the windshield back. Did Mustang ever have a sunroof? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, there were some of the old T-tops yeah, yeah, oh, well, and sunroofs. T-tops, I know, yeah. Yep. Oh, the moon, moon roofs. roofs. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, but, you know, that's not, no. um, we don't do that anymore. No, no. We did have the glass roof, remember 08? I think right. probably through 10, we had the glass roof yeah, that you could yeah, put on there. Yeah, yeah. With the little sh sunshade. But, yeah, we haven't done we haven't done the moon roof in a while. Let's, let's but, you know, you can see some of the things in here from the from the back, Jay, that is, this is the handling package, right? right. This is the gurney flap. Right. And the gurney flap, you literally put on. On, you know, you don't want to be necessarily running that on when you're running on the 405, but it, it improves the downforce. So right. the arrow with the front splitter and the gurney flap in the back changes the downforce so that it is better going through the air on the track. Cool. Let's, let's open the trunk. Let me get the key. The key, the fob. Let's see what you got here. There you go. All right, you got some room in there. You do have the room in there. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's not something that you're going to be, you know, packing and moving when your friends ask you, right. <laughs> ask you to help move. But it does fit the stuff in there from a track standpoint that you need. The yeah. jacks, the tool, the equipment. Right. Um, if you want to take it golfing, you can still fit a set of golf clubs not in gonna there. not going to go golf. No, but this would be the one where you want to put the replacement calipers and rotors in here. And a sheet of plywood, you can't buy plywood anymore. It's too expensive. <laughs> too expensive. So forget it. Like, you just buy a couple of two by fours and yeah. put that in there. From the back, one of the things that we're really proud of, Jay, and I'm sure you heard the noise, the, the visceral experience of yeah. Mustang. Um, these are four and a half inch pipes, right? So these are about the same size pipes that you have on your GT500. Right, right. Um, but if you see in there, there's that perforation through there yeah. in the back that changes its sound characteristics. The sound and the feel of Mustang is extremely important, and they spent a ton of time, because it doesn't have the flat plane, right. right? so it doesn't have that high revving, throaty sound, but it has a unique burble right. on four and a half inch tips that come out that well, just is just well, amazing. We'll hear it in a and what does this weigh? Um, it's it, just under 4,000 pounds, okay. right? So it's still under that 4,000 pounds. Well, see, category. that's an honest answer. Thank you. Yeah, I Thank mean, you. It, it, you know, it's it, it's not a lightweight vehicle, but the you know the pony cars have never really been. Uh, but it is an efficient balance of weight. Well, there really are no lightweight vehicles anymore. Not what we think of. You know, we think of under oh, 20, under 2,500 pounds. <laughs> yeah. You know, and of course you've got all the safety protections. You've got the door guard beam in here and. And, you, and you've got how many airbags on these? I don't know the exact number. Well, you've got side, you've got side, front, front yeah, and then yeah. the, the dash panel piece as well as the side right. air curtain. I don't know how many actual bags that comes with it. But again, like when you said on the Recaros, even if you got those Recaros, the fully functional airbag right. system in there, which makes it really safe. Is that a new horse? Um, no, it's not the new horse. No, it's not a new horse. Um, you know, we came out with the Mustang Mach-E. Right. That one has a little bit different horse right. on it than more um, aerodynamic. This right. one, um, and it was a Hungarian cavalry master who did the design of the first pony. Oh. I learned this from from Jack Telnak. He spoke. I don't learn much about Mustang anymore, but well, I'll tell you about that guy. I know who you mean. Yeah. His name is begin with a K, and he was an Olympian. Yes. And he was in the Olympics in the 1930s. He was uh, Hungarian. Yes. When the Olympics were canceled, since he was an equestrian Olympian, he was, he was uh, inducted into the service. And he was put in the cavalry division. And his commander was killed. And since he was an Olympian, he was made the chief, uh, or the head guy, yeah. captain, whatever you want to call it. And he led the last charge in modern warfare of men on horseback wow. against tanks. Oh my gosh. And got, <laughs> they all got blown out. But here's the part they don't tell you. He was on the other side. <laughs> he wasn't ours. <laughs> no. He wasn't ours, so no. I, I couldn't care less. <laughs> but then like, America, we forgive and forget. He emigrated to America. He went yep. to work, and he designed that horse. But yeah, yeah, but it's a great story. I mean, imagine charging with a sword against 
<laughs> tanks firing. I mean, it's, I'd rather have this horse yeah, than yeah, the one exactly. that they were riding on back in the day. And you know why the horse goes this direction and not that direction? No. Because when Lee Iacocca, when the Mustang came out, the designers in Detroit, he said, no, no. Go west, young man. That's who was that? Hor who, not Horatio. Oh, who was it? Yeah. But, but the idea of go west for new thinking. And yep. I want the horse to be facing west, California, where you know, all the young you know, people the, who the buy young the Mustangs, Mustangs would. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's why it goes that way. But that, that's, that's kind of interesting. But yeah, that, you're the only other guy I've met that knows the story of the, of the horse. So the Jack cover. Telnack told us the story, yeah. you know, the design chief from Ford who retired. Right. And we were up at the Hall of Fame, the Automotive Hall of Fame, and we started doing, you know, a storytelling and told us how he carved it out of wood instead right. of have sketched it. It was and an homage to his haunch. horse. Yeah. It was an homage to the to his horse uh, that in, he rode in, in, the, in, in that battle. Yeah, yeah. So which is cool. Yeah, cool stories on it. Yeah. Always yeah. Mustang stories. Always, you gotta always have, have, you have a gotta, Mustang gotta story. Have Mustang stories. I like the new shape. It was starting for a while. It was looking a little bulbous to me. Now it seems more muscular. And the, I, this is always my the rear quarter paddle on almost every car is my favorite part. These rear haunches right here. I like this crease line here. You know, it, it gives it a sense it of. It gives it that athletic, like, yeah, you know, right. when you're in that haunches up right. in your stance, right? You get that, well, that you, powerful force. Please forward. don't do that again. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, no, no. I got it. It's great. Well, can we, uh, can we take it for a ride? Oh, I'd love to take it for a ride. Why don't you get behind the driver's seat? And this That's is our, where you belong. This is our antenna now. That's the Sirius satellite. Yeah. Uh, puck in there, and based off of how we had to do it to be aerodynamic, it looks slightly like a shark fin in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But to get the service and the satellite service that comes standard with the car, uh, that's where the position of the puck had to be. So remember, they used to be the old flat puck. Oh yeah. And and now based actually I remember the MCA. antenna. Remember the antenna. The antenna's Wait, up over if here. If you bought a car, the, the dealer would take a drill, <laughs> and they would drill and put a hole <laughs> right here. <laughs> To put the antenna, and then it would rust all, all around, right around, around the outside. Around the hole, yeah. yeah. And when we used to do the photo shoots, we'd actually have to take the antenna off because it ruined the line well, of the picture. And also, I'm glad the antenna, because I, I remember a kid walking down the streets in New York, and some gang guys would rip the antenna off and just start with some whip you in it. <laughs> Jeez, it's horrible. It's hard to beat a guy with that. <laughs> it well, is. Let's see what she does here. And this has electric power steering, correct? Yeah, he passed. Yep. You know something? It is excellent. It's really very, very good. Because that, that an American, that used to be my thing. I always felt like I was there was a high spot in yeah. the steering analog. You know, I go, what's that weird? Now it just feels very go kart like, very dark, and you yeah. can adjust it, can't you? Yep. And uh, in the steering, in the modes, it actually does right. adjust that e pass. So the modes do calibration for your engine, the Magnaride suspension, the exhaust, and the E-Pass, and roll stability control, too. Yeah, something I like about all American manufacturing is they're keeping the same body style longer, just refining it, smoothing out the rough edges. I mean, you know, everybody, whether it, I mean, Dodgers use yeah. that, that Challenger body since 2008, yeah. but this latest version is tight, it doesn't creak, yeah. You know, same thing, like Mustang. I mean, I can remember you used to get a little bit of hood flex back in the 60s yeah. and all that. Whereas this just feels like, like a solid billet piece. And the engineers are enthusiasts like us. Right, right. And, you know, if you take an engineer who's an enthusiast, you give him tools, you give him track time, and the, you know, the time to learn. So they've been learning since the 2015. They're going to continue to refine yeah. that to make it more fun to drive. You know, the funny part, or it's almost discouraging, is you learn all about cams and timing, and then electric cars come in, you realize you know nothing. <laughs> you know, you need the laptop to plug you, in. Well, not even to work, just to understand what makes the difference between a high performance electric motor. I mean, we all know that with, with a, you know, uh, an ice motor. You know, you know, you know what? Okay, different carburetion headers, injection, whatever. 
Whereas with electric, I don't know what it is. Yeah. You know, bigger magnets, whatever, <laughs> you know. It's just funny to, to be a novice again and start all over. Yeah, it's fun to learn because that performance, I mean, even if you think of like the old, you know, wheel curves based engines, right. right? That add 100 horsepower to it. That's all, you know, new fun stuff for enthusiasts to learn. And what is the EPA mileage thing on this? It is it is in tier one gas guzzler. Oh, it is a gas guzzler? For the manual transmission. Okay. For the automatic, it's not. Okay. Um, the manual, yeah, it's, and I'll get the actual label well, in it, but it's tier uh, well, one. I'll say this. Let me put it in. Now this one, even with 480 horsepower, this doesn't pay a gas guzzler tax. Yes, right. this exact one does not. Right. Yeah. The manual transmission one does. Yeah. That Tremec box, you know. Before the manual transmissions used to get the best gas mileage, right. but the way you know we're gearing that Tremec box, it's right. more for performance than fuel economy. Fuel economy is not one of the top ten reasons why you buy a Mustang. So is, is this a Tremec? <laughs> uh, no, this is our 10R. Oh, okay. This is the 10R that you know that this Ford, developed in-house. Uh, this is the 10R was jointly developed between GM and Ford, oh, okay. and then they each manufacture their own versions gotcha, of it. Gotcha. I forget what year that was, but like. 2016. Let's go back and look. But yeah, this is our own internal transmission. And then when you, you strap on it, and it, it'll hold that RPM in that mode because we're in Sport Plus mode now. Right. Um, so it's gonna hold the shifting points longer, um, and then it adapts over time to hold it even longer if you keep driving it that aggressively. And what's the difference between Sport Plus and Track? So, best way to describe it is, um, it's gonna catch you a little bit quicker when you're in the sport plus mode right. um it's the more fun way around a racetrack as it, opposed to the fastest way oh you mean the sport so plus your back end yeah your back end will slide track. out a right, little right, bit yeah yeah um but the track mode is the best for actually getting the best right. track times sport plus will give you maybe not the perfect calibration for the the track but a good combination between street fun and, right. and legal street fun and yeah. track driving. It's like real life. The show off stuff looks better, but it actually doesn't do anything. Doesn't, it's not no. a formula no, drift. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't it's really not the work. RTR Mustang from Vaughn hanging its back end out. Tell the Burbank and LA streets are getting back to normal. The traffic that was yeah, here. No, getting to... awful, yeah. <laughs> Miss the coronavirus. <laughs> the shorter commute times. Yeah, shorter commute time. Well, you, would, you just walk from the kitchen to the bedroom. The bedroom. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's nice though to get to the events again. You know, the the enthusiasts who love doing this stuff, that pent up demand for people who want to be around cars together. Well, the thing I find amazing is the base motors are now more powerful than the most powerful version when I was a kid. You know, when I was a kid. I've had that 65 Shelby for 35 yeah. years, at least yeah. 35, almost 40, almost 40 years. And with 306 horsepower, that was the most powerful Power thing you could get. And then you buy the turbo four cylinder, which is the pretty much the base. And that's 306. I mean, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. And then the hypo version of it is 332 horsepower. Yeah, that's funny. A little bit different than the, the ones that you were at working at Wilmington Ford back in I know. the day. Well, you know, it's funny. I drove, they, they dropped off two Mustangs a, a couple of years ago. Well, yeah. God, this is a while ago. And the high performance V8 and the four cylinder turbo. And I drove the V8 everywhere. And I said to myself, well, you know, I better put some miles on the four cylinder. Yeah. They're going to think I'm not. Yeah. And you know something? I loved it. I loved it better than the V8 because in the hills, it really handled. It was lighter. Uh, I mean, I was stunned at how, what a nice driving car it was. And it wasn't even as fast as the V8, of course. Pretty close. Pretty close. I mean, in real world driving, it was close enough. A little bit different exhaust note, but yeah, yeah like the, so the high performance package of the EcoBoost where we took the Focus RS motor yeah. and, you know, turned it sideways so that it was rear wheel drive configuration. And it's 332 horsepower. It's 200 plus pounds lighter on the front end. Right. So on a short road course, yeah. That where that weight really makes a difference. Those I'm, cars. I'm in ninth gear now. Drops it down to third. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I, I guess only in uh, when you're in normal or touring mode 
you get to 10 speed. Yeah. You don't get that in sport plus. <laughs> no. it, it, it does. Eventually, I think if you're on the highway and you set the cruise control off of it, yeah. it might go up into 10th. I yeah. don't know the exact strategy on there, but yeah, normal, it'll try to do it for most fuel efficient. In sport plus, it's going to give you that shifting yeah. for that, that fun to drive aspect of it. Yeah, we were talking about it. When I launched the 05, right, I was on, so I went from, you know, the SVT 0304 Terminator, and then I did the product marketing job on the on the Gen 5. Our V8, our 4.6 liter, had 300 horsepower. Right, right. right. Yeah, <laughs> now, yeah. now, now out of, you know, the displacement of the supercharger on the GT500 is 2.65 liters. Right, right. I know. <laughs> it's bigger I know. than this our engine that's it, producing 300 horsepower. It's really the golden age of supercars It, it, it is. And, you know, and, and nobody wants to be the first, second place car, you know. So our engineers want to build the best car, and the Camaro engineers want to build the best one, and the Dodge guys want it to go in a straight line really fast. And, you know, they, everybody's competing against each other. So you have that technology, yeah. you have the enthusiasts that want to work on it, and, you know, that is what's giving you this technological no, performance right. advancement. I, I, you know, I'm so proud of American engineering. I remember the 80s when you couldn't even get a car with a back window that rolled down. Remember? Oh, no. No, the back windows don't roll down. Really, we don't have that technology? We can walk on the moon, but we can't roll down. It has evolved so much. And, you know, the 60s, everybody remembers it fondly, and they were great performance vehicles for their day. But it's evolved to get to the point where... I know it's funny you say that, but we did a thing, Tim Allen and I, in the show. Tim got a 67 GTO tri power everything yep. and we just went and rented an Altima one of those yep. Nissan, Nissan Altimas V6 four door and and it won it, <laughs> it, it was faster it was quicker off the line and, you know and it, I mean GTO sounded great but it went oh oh and he went okay that's that's the you realize 50 years is a long time in engineering <laughs> yeah. you know six or seven years I mean the parts of that I like about this over my 350, but the steering is so sharp and so smart, and I'm, I'm, I'm just astounded how nice it's looking. Something I do like sigma. is the uh, the chassis plate on the dash there. I yeah. have it on my 350. Mine is number 36 because they built 36 and 15. What number is this one? So this one is 130. Right. And what we do is the chassis badge um, can be different than the VIN badge, right. um, but the chassis is what the number that's assigned to it as it's going down the assembly line. So right. it's unique and specific to this vehicle right. and the build timing. And we've done it on all of our performance derivatives. So the high, oh, Mustang, the high performance package Mustang, the four cylinder has it, GT350 has it, GT500 has it, Bullet had it. Kind of recognizes, you know, kind of gives it that old, like, like the old Carroll Shelby Mustang badge. Now. Right, right. It kind of ties it specifically to the vehicle. You know, I just like how planted it feels. All four wheels are on the ground. No flexing, no squeaking, no no pushing, squeak, no nothing. You just hear the sound of the engine. Mustang exhaust note is important. Yeah, yeah. You know, like when we did the Gen 5, um, we literally had you know, members of the Ford family come in and listen to what it was coming off the 4.6, because when we went from the 5 liter back to the 4.6 to get, you know, in the Gen 5, that exhaust note is important, and it's important to us. I like these toggle switches. I like toggles as yeah. opposed to, you know. And that was kind of um, more originally from that, uh, when we were uh, doing it the Gen 6, the design in 15, the, you know, the plane type Mustang tie-in, right. the toggle switches that were on the planes that you have, right. more the toggle switches here, but they're functional and they're, they're easy, you know, tactile wise when you're driving to be able to flip it, you know, without having to move your head to look right, off right. the road. Wheels are nice size. I like the steering wheel. Yeah, it doesn't have the flat spot like the GT350 that you have on the bottom. Right. Um, but it still has that tactile feel and the grip yeah. for when you're on when you're on a track. It's not the Alcantara, but the leather wrapped. The power band on this car. Yeah, is the power band. Show. No matter what.
fuck do you in? I'm in fifth. I could be in sixth. I could be in third. There's power yeah. in everywhere. I mean, but you're still talking 7,400 RPM right. red line. And now your GT350 was 8,250. Yeah, I mean, but and that's, that's still high up there for a V8. To me, that's the craziest thing to me. Because whenever I hit five grand, I got better. Oh, no, shift. I've got another 3,000 RPM. Yeah. yeah. And it's again, it's not the dual clutch like on the on the GT500 or Ford right. GT, but it still has the ability for you to be able to do the shifting if you want. I mean, it really handles <laughs> terrific. So when you buy the GT350 or GT500 or right. Mach 1, you get the class, the Ford Performance Racing School right. class, that we call Track Attack. Right. And so we give, you know, lead follow on the on the inside roll hole. We do some of the drag strip exercises. And then at the end of the day, we give them a hot lap right. from a professional instructor. Right. And what the, the fun thing is, is to see their faces of, you know, because they thought they were pushing the car hard. Oh, right, yeah. And yeah. then they actually get to see what, yeah, how it I operates know. in the hand of the professional, and their faces just light up. And it kind of shows how that can go from that basic, you know, beginning driver all the way to the professionals and make you feel like you were enjoying it and driving it well. Right. And you almost can't break it. <laughs> and then on the manual now, on the Tremec, um, we have rev matching put in, so you right. don't even have to do the heel toe anymore. I mean, you still can, and a lot of us still do it, but literally the electronic rev matching in that Tremec box puts that in the RPM that you need to be to be back in, you know, smoothly back into the accelerator. Well, Jim, thanks for bringing me here. I normally ask for a, a stick. I just wanted to see what 10 speeds in the Mustang was like, and it's fascinating. And you don't pay a gas because of a tax, you get pretty good gas mileage. And, uh, Plus, you got your paddles here, so this has been a great weekend. Thanks for letting me put 250-something uh, miles on this thing, so I appreciate it. Those are 250 good miles that that's Ford right. Motor Company appreciates you doing that. Oh, I, We're glad you had fun. That's when you know your life is good, when they appreciate you putting miles on that car. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. See you next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>